Hey everyone, it is Mike Bruce with Life Starts with Food, uh, Life Starts with Food Health Coaching, and I am here with uh, Theo Lucier. And uh, I, I came about Theo uh, through just a really interesting kind of giveaway he was doing with um, with some blue blocker glasses. And um, and ever since then, I've been getting daily emails from from him. And the guy and I, he, we just resonate, kind of like uh, a couple weeks ago with uh, with Doctor Stock. Um, He's just one of those guys. What he talks about is stuff I'm interested in. And uh, Theo used to be a um, a mortgage or no, not a mortgage broker. I'm sorry, a a real estate broker. And uh, through some severe burnout, he found his way into biohacking, which he can explain what the heck that means. Which I consider myself a little bit of a biohacker. Have been in that like looking in that field in and out for probably nine years now. Um, and I just never really come out about it. I'm kind of a closeted biohacker. So, uh, so Theo has become a health entrepreneur. He uh, has very deep knowledge of so many things from brain health and depression to uh, getting better sleep. Some of these things can take tons of money, um, but Theo also specializes uh, in explaining how to do this for free or on the cheap. So um, he's spent thousands of dollars on himself to, to figure out how to heal. And yeah, he can talk about the big health toys and the health gadgets that cost, you know, $10,000, but he can talk about the supplement that might cost you uh, uh, 50 cents a pill. So um, with that, Theo and I are going to talk today about the, uh, what he calls the, the four free pillars of health, which is sunshine, grounding, hydration, and uh, exercise. And these are things that I preach on all the time with my health clients and uh, at the doctor's office and, uh, and just with my friends and it's it's things that I believe in fully and uh, have talked about on a couple different interviews, just not all together. So um, Theo, you know about Gary Greenfield, he's been on talking about yep. uh, about the water, structured water, which you're big into um, and sunshine and uh, and grounding. I mean, he's he's big on all of those and movement too. So he, I guess we really did hit this a lot with him too. Just, yeah. um, I'm excited to see, let's get this in focus there. We'll get well, it. This is actually um, a really good segue into the first thing. So sunshine actually structures the water in your body. And that's been the primary benefit all along. So when you go out in sunshine, everybody knows that it helps. It stimulates production of vitamin D. What a lot of people don't know is it converts that vitamin D into vitamin D sulfate, which is actually the, the more bioavailable form that your body takes and uses for immune and healthy bones and um, all that stuff, which is, which is great. And then the secondary benefit, especially for men is that sunlight can upregulate your testosterone production. If it hits your chest and upper back, it increases your natural testosterone production about 200%. Yeah. And if you expose your groin to it, it's about 400% oh, yeah. upregulation. Yeah. yeah. I think it was so, a group article a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, it just showed yeah. people laying on their back and their feet up in the air. And yeah, uh, well, yeah, that was, that's a that's a yogic thing. So it's 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 your testes that that was were actually studied with sun exposure. I don't know about the rest of it, but there there's Who's a the company called <laughs> what's that? Who's the lucky doctor that gets? To yeah, do that? yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there's a company called Cool Tan, and they actually make Cool Tan boards or uh, tan through board shorts. Yeah, and yeah, I have a pair and. Yeah, they're a little dicey to wear in public because they're pretty gauzy, you know, thin material, but they let through about 80% of the sunlight. So you can yeah. still, you know, yeah. get it down there. If that's your Hilda, thing. My friend Hilda that has been on before that we were talking about right before we went live. Yeah. She, she goes, um, uh, she definitely always has some kind of tan through shirt on if she's out in the sun. So oh, interesting. Um, yeah. Before we move on too far, can you explain, how you got into this, uh, just, just two minutes of, yep. kind of you had severe burnout through yep. overuse of your body. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it short. So, um, I used to own a real estate investment company I was partnered on it. And, um, we started at the, when the market crashed, this is back in two, you know, 2010 at the bottom of the market. And it was a typical real scrappy bootstrap kind of thing at first. And, working seven days a week. And eventually we did pretty well, but we got overwhelmed with the amount, this is the volume of work we were doing. So I was working um, seven days a week and typically a normal, a easy day was, was about 
uh, I'd say about 10 hours and about once or twice a week, I do a 12 hour day. And I did, I did that for years. And, you know, I started like a lot of people do, I uh, use stimulants. So I started with coffee and then I moved into the energy drinks and overdoing yerba mate and all this crazy stuff. And I started using nicotine cause that would kind of put me in a state of calm focus. Um, and then eventually I would get so wound up, you know, we were having happy hour at the office. So that would used to start at like six and then it would be five and then it was four. <laughs> so we, then we were doing that every day. So then I'd wake up feeling terrible, you know, cause I had drinks the night before. And so I'd need a bunch of stimulants to rev me up and then I wouldn't be able to fall asleep. So I'd have to have to use alcohol and enough cycles of that. Your body just starts to kind of shut down and, yeah. Um, your, as your endocrine system gets trashed. And the problem for me was the, uh, with the cognitive decline. So I was creating this environment where my mitochondria could never quite recover. I, w I wasn't giving them what they needed. I wasn't in sunlight. I wasn't exercising enough. I wasn't doing, I was eating terribly. I was drinking. Yeah, I was just terrible. Yeah. And I got into this state of a uh, malaise where I was just, I was depressed and I'd never been depressed before. I was always, people used to make fun of me because I was so positive and I was depressed and negative and bitter and reactive. And, you know, for a long time, I blamed that on a lack of willpower and I kept trying to think my way out of the problem. And, you know, you can't think your way out of burnout. If, if you are actually burnt out, that means you have a mitochondrial dysfunction usually in your brain yeah, and that's what's affecting you. And I had nutrient deficiencies that are really common, like low iodine, low magnesium. I wasn't doing any vitamin C. I didn't have any A, D or K. These are all super basic vitamins that everyone needs. Um, didn't have any of those. So long story short, I discovered the biohacking and alternative health world and I was ready to do anything because I should have been a happy guy. Like I had a thriving business. Um, yes, there were some time management issues, but I was making high income and and had a lot of savings and you know clients that respected me and nice little business there. But I was so unhappy. So uh, went full tilt in the biohacking stuff and just immediately started a micronutrient supplementation routine and immediately started feeling better so that's adk iodine your b vitamins c um magnesium or that was basically it immediate immediate benefit yeah um, completely changed my diet around so i started with the bulletproof diet which as you said that's more or less mark sisson's kind of set yeah, up in eating mark, mark sisson's like uh, i'm a primal health coach so the whole ancestral thing comes from mark sisson yeah uh, my, my learning of it comes from him and but it's, it, yeah, it totally meshes with bulletproof. So, yeah. Yeah. And to make a long story short, so I basically provided my body the conditions to heal itself and it did. And so then mood improved, cognition improved, sleep improved, all these things improved because I kind of followed a, a bottom up approach. So, what I call a top down approach is trying to think your way out of burnout, which is, you know, you go to seminars and you do positive thinking and you do your affirmations and that stuff is awesome. But, <laughs> If your brain is not, if it doesn't have the support it needs to do what it needs to do day in and day out, you're, it's just not going to work. Yeah. And so I used a bottom up approach where I was like, okay, what do my cells need? What, like, literally, what do they need? And they need micronutrients, sunshine, you know, negative ions from the earth when you stand there and ground, exercise, movement hydration that was a huge one i was chronically dehydrated i can't wait to talk to you about that yeah and uh stuff turned around so that's kind of the and i exited that business because ultimately even when i did heal myself i just didn't want to be in a business like that anymore yeah yeah and uh the reason my coaching business is life starts with food is because uh i just couldn't function as the person that people thought i was all the time like just like you right. i get harassed for being too uppity to yep. uh too happy sometimes, but like yeah. that was not me away from people. So, um, yeah. and that was not me with my family, not me with my girlfriend, who's now my wife. Um, and like, th thank God that, that, uh, God is good. She stuck with me when I was just a grumpy dude. <laughs> yep. so, 
she, uh, yeah, when I, when I changed my food, all of a sudden I was, and food was the base for me, right? Like yep. it was the thing that, that was the biggest lever that had to be pushed. And that changed who I was as a person, how I could respond to people. It yep. made me a better friend, a better boyfriend, yep. now better husband, better son, better brother. Um, it made me a better me. So and you know what's cr what's crazy about that is it's effortless. It just yeah, happens. Yeah. Yeah. You just respond to life differently. Whereas if you use a top down approach, which is a very Western kind of mental approach, like okay, positive thinking, and maybe I'll do some NLP to myself in the morning when I'm looking at the mirror. It's it takes so much effort. It's so hard to do. <laughs> But I could never can't... stick. Yeah, I couldn't stick yeah. with those kind of things. Meditation yeah. stuff. I get my meditation would be like hands in the garden or on my bonsais or or lifting weights. You know, taking yep. a walk. That but is a meditation. Like yeah, yeah, yeah so, that's really good to hear, man. Let, so let's dive into. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's dive into this. Um, I'm excited yep. to hear your your spin on things, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be in line with me. And I love that. I I love when people preach to this choir, man. <laughs> I love yeah. That. So. Well, let's get into it. So a lot of people don't know that, you know, sunshine, grounding, hydration and exercise, they're all connected. And that's kind of the point I want to get across is they're not they're all doing the same thing. It's just different. It's a, they have different mechanisms of action. So they're all united by biophysics. So one thing that people forget about modern health and, and medicine is that we use a chemical model. And the reason why we use a chemistry based model is because back in the 1910s, like pre World War One, um, that was when antibiotics were brand new. And that was when the first pharmaceutical companies were created. And by then they had already figured out that it was massively profitable to patent these drugs and use them to treat symptoms. And the Rockefellers were the original investors in the first um, pharmaceutical companies. And when they figured out how much money could be made by having a toll booth position on patented drugs, they hired a lobbyist named Flexner. He came out with something called the Flexner Report, which basically demonized anything that was non-chemistry based, which at the time there was a huge um, amount of electromedicine treatment centers and hospitals in the United States. Most people don't even know that they existed now. And you could go to medical school and be a doctor uh, specializing in electromedicine. And they had really good you know, success rates treating a lot of different things. Uh, you can actually go back to old editions of the LA Times and you know read articles and some of the stuff. There's still studies from back then. But the Flexner Report basically lobbied Congress to shut that down, turn everything over into the chemistry model and consolidate all medical school teaching um, into universities. Whereas before, like you could go to a medical school, you know, like just there it was, you know, it's just this downtown or whatever. It yeah. wasn't affiliated with the universities. So they rolled it up in universities, controlled the curriculum that way, and then shut down electromedicine. So that kind of disappeared. But, you know, from the 1700s up until about the 1920s, electromedicine was used because they knew biophysics worked. And so at the chemistry level, below it is the physics level, because everything in chemistry deals with charge. So all atoms use a certain charge um, and they're going to have a positive, neutral or negative charge. And don't worry if it sounds complicated. It's not. It's basically you just have to think in, in terms of electrical charge. So a lot of people don't know this, but one of the reasons vitamin C works so well is because it is it donates electrons. It donates charge to your body. Okay. And that it's so it's when someone says says something is an antioxidant, that means it's teeming with a lot of negative electrons that go into your body and they attach to the positively charged uh, free radicals and they neutralize them. That's okay. how it works. So if you take sunshine when it strikes your skin, it actually creates a electrical reaction in your body and it donates free electrons. And then that energy goes into your, your, the water in your body, the water in your cells and actually structures or orders the water and it makes the water more bioavailable and less viscous. Mm -hmm. So then your cellular respiration speeds up. So it's basically like your cell can breathe faster. Oh, okay. So um, it's just more efficient. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's the near infrared and the far infrared rays in the sun that that do that. So if you've heard of like juve lights or these infrared saunas, yeah. um, you I know, juve light. Red juvenator over there. I had it on top of my head before we started. So I'm great. Right yeah, right that's, I have one. Yeah, I have two juve lights and I use an infrared sauna. So those, those are near infrared and then far infrared is the sauna, mm -hmm. which is the heating one. But both of them structure your water in your body. And that is the primary benefit like we i mean yeah it's it's good to drink good water but you just get out in the sunshine and it yep. changes the water in your body to yep. the fourth phase of water which we're never taught the fourth phase of water yeah yeah it's it's wild so yeah what you're referring to is you know dr gerald pollock's work at the university of washington biophysics lab that that's kind of the guy in the west who has scientifically established that there is indeed a fourth phase of water, so that's H3O2. So it's 10% more dense than normal water, and it has more oxygen than normal water, and it carries an electrical charge. So if we, if now we're transitioning into hydration and structured water, that the difference between structured water or scientifically what is known as ordered water and just normal water, like tap water, is normal water doesn't have a charge to it, and it's it's disordered. Yeah. And it's structured like water, it's what's just, that? It's stripped of life almost. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's it's kind of interesting because it's only in the last five years that the scientists have had lab instrumentation that was really sensitive enough to be able to look at this stuff. But pre, you know, five to ten years ago, people would use the term you just did, where they'd say the water's dead and lifeless because we didn't have the scientific vocabulary for it yet. Um, but you know. It, it is essentially lifeless because it lacks a charge. And the thing with your cells is, you know, if your cell's a circle, on one side it's negative and one side is positive. And the way that the cell gets nutrients in and out and waste out is it has to have a proper charge and it uses water to do that. And so when you drink structured water that has a charge to it, your cells aquaporins there are these little gates on the cell membrane that the the water molecules have to line up one by one and then they they go in single file that has to have the right charge to do that so it pulls in the water and then it comes out the other side as it uses the energy from the water how cool is that yeah so if you drink tap water you can and that's i guess more or less fine but it takes energy from your body to do that. So your body has to structure the water once you drink it in order yeah. for the cells to use it because it's not very bioavailable. Yeah. So that has an energy cost to it. And that's uh, that's kind of like what I, um, when I tell people about eating more protein from animals, um, yeah. it's like, yeah, you can take a Toyota Fender and put it on a Ford, but you're going to have to do some work, right? Yeah. A lot of work. Yeah. Um, it's much easier just to take a Ford Fender and put it on a Ford. So um, are you talking are, like the bioavailability of plant proteins? Versus, yeah, yeah. So the yeah. plant protein is most people just can't absorb it the same way, um, yep. uh, as they can red meat or or just meat in general. But uh, yep. yeah, it's an interesting. And our buddy, um, our buddy Steve Dale, I think he said he had a he had a uh, consult with you a few months back. Um, we were mutual friends, and uh, yeah, he so he uses Celtic sea salt, which yeah, um, yeah, that's something that we. My wife still thinks I'm crazy. He says. I love it. I do it every morning, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I, my water has it in there right now. Um, so yeah. that's really Well, cool. actually, he, Steve brings up a really good point. So the, um, the how do you structure water, right? Because that's probably a question people listening to this ask. Well, there's a lot of different ways, but what they all have in common is you have to add energy to the water to structure it. So that can be the sun. So you can literally just go get in the sun for 20 minutes and it'll penetrate deep enough in your body to, to structure the water in your body. So that's, that's, that's like literally free. You can go and do that. Um, another way to structure water is through mechanical uh, methods. So they call it vortexing. Um, but basically they're, well, in nature, the way this works is if you imagine a tumbling mountain stream, it has a lot of rocks and the water's kind of bouncing its way down. Um, it spins and that, that spin, it kind of picks up some of the, the energy from that and it adds energy to it and it helps structure it. And there's devices that will imitate a mountain stream by 
spinning or vortexing the water. And so that's a mechanical way of adding energy. Yeah. You I can have, use magnets. Yeah, I have one on my house from uh, uh, Greenfield Naturals, Gary Greenfield. So oh, you got a whole house one. Whole house, that the yeah. uh, quad flow, he calls it. And uh, yeah, I know that yeah, one. It's terrific. So, um, and and yeah, you, I, I know you've, um, I can't think of the brand that you've uh, mentioned before in your emails, but it's a device that's probably about eight inches long and you pour yeah. water through and it, it's, it has a specific weight vortexes. Yeah, I have two of them. So the, the, the one you're referencing is called Natural Action Technologies and he's been around a long time um, and they're great devices. And then there's another company out of Austria and it's called UMH. And I have one of theirs as a portable, super expensive, um, <laughs> yeah, worth it. Big. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like almost a thousand bucks. Um, but it it does, it works really well. It's like kind of the Rolls Royce of them. But having owned both, I would actually get the natural action technologies before the UMH, just because the UMH is like a work of art and you don't want to bring it anywhere because you don't want to break it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and then a, a freeway. Um, I, I've heard you mention this before and other people, uh, like spring water, you just talked about spring water yep. we, mimicking it. Why not just go straight to the spring? Can. Yeah. So uh, what's the, uh, what's the website? Findaspring.com. Findaspring.com. Yeah. So yeah. here in California, kind of challenging. Um, but, uh, other States they're everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're in, I'm in Pennsylvania, um, near Pittsburgh and, we actually have a lot of spring water in Pittsburgh yeah. um, and and people worry about pollution. But the truth is, the uh, if I'm not mistaken, find a spring, they will have pollution levels of the different springs if they're if they're worthy of using or not. And um, yep. the the earth and this whole shutdown with the whole earth is proof. The earth cleans terrifically well. Um, it yep. is the best made in the world. It's, yep. So the so spring water coming out of a mountain most of the time unless there's coal mines that have messed with things uh, there, there's a lot of good that happens with spring water. So um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, depending on how long the water cycle is like one spring water company that's been delivering nationwide since the twenties is uh, mountain Valley. Mm -hmm. And they like their water cycles, 3000 years. So you're, you're getting water from 3000 years ago. So that's, that's pre, industrialization obviously but you know pre it pre everything <laughs> yeah that's crazy so, yeah i used to get that delivered in my house and it, it is actually fantastic um and when i travel i try to find their green glass bottles because it works so well um but what steve mentioned the, the celtic salt so that's another way to structure water is because the salt has like a really strong negative charge meaning it's an electron donor so it's an antioxidant and you put that in your water and stir it up and it literally adds charge to the water and it makes the water way more bioavailable. Yeah. I, I cycle between, um, the Celtic, is it Celtic or Celtic? Uh, I go Celtic. Yeah. I, yeah. I call that Celtic, but when I'm talking about like Celtic tribes, I say Celtic. Yeah. But I, yeah. I um, but, uh, so I cycle between the Celtic sea salt, the Redmond mm -hmm. real salt, and then I have a third one that I don't like putting this third one on food because it just doesn't taste as good to me, but it's uh, Baja Gold. It was actually oh, yeah. Gary Greenfield recommended that yeah. one. Yeah. How do you like it? Um, for, for water, it's terrific. Um, yeah. And we talk about muscle testing. If I muscle test which one I need in, in my water, it almost always comes up with that one. Yeah, I've heard good so, things about it. Yeah, there's some different mineral content that it has. It's supposed to be higher than both Redman and, and Celtic, but it's um, yeah. it, they're, cl they're, they're all close. Um, but you've mentioned some things about pink sea salt. Everybody loves pink sea salt because that was a big, or Himalayan salt. It's a big yeah. push for a few years. Yeah. Um, what's What are some of the actual worries that we, we need to watch out for with pink Himalayan? Well, especially for men, um, it's really high in iron. That's what gives it its red coloring um, is the literally the iron oxide in there. It's, it's um kind of kind of rusting yeah. so you know as men you can only get rid of excess iron in your body if you donate blood that's the only way it comes out if we don't have and a monthly cycle that helps us out with that exactly <laughs> yep and then the other big concern with it is that it's pretty radioactive which a lot of people don't know but you're it comes from a part of the earth that you know there's natural radioactivity in the earth obviously and it, where that stuff is mined is 
pretty radioactive, not enough to, you know, obviously cause too many issues, but long term, it's just we're already bathed in this electromagnetic sea of signals that our bodies are trying to process. We're already exposed to a lot of oxidative stress from air pollution, car pollution, you name it. So mm -hmm. adding another thing in there that just kind of adds more stress to your cells, I don't think is a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, I totally agree with that. And uh, and in fact, I, I probably stopped using pink Himalayan man, over a year ago. And I don't know why, aside from I, it just stopped tasting as good to me. Yeah. And I, I found Redmond and Celtic sea salt around that time. And just, yep. um, I'd already had that, but I wasn't super serious about using that. But it just, my body just stopped wanting it. Um, now, to, to for people that are worried about iron, like, because I'm, I'm, I push red meat like crazy. So people think, yep. well, I can't have that much red meat because it's, it's so full of iron. Um, now, so what's the difference? It, it, I shouldn't say what's the difference. That, that's putting you on the spot there. But um, the iron that's coming from the sea salt is very different. You said iron oxide, whereas mm -hmm. iron in meat is going to be heme iron. Heme, yeah. Okay, so so the heme iron we need. You cannot get the, that type of iron without meat, really. It's more usable, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, Weston A. Price, you know Hilda. She she talks about heme iron a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah ADHA, that's, which you were mentioning earlier, she's all about that. So. Yeah, I mean, most people are nutrient deficient in the U.S., which is crazy because we're supposed to be this first world country, but you know. So everyone, much. What's that? And we eat so much. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, but it, people are nutrient deficient. Like yeah. uh, I could use my brother as an example. You know, he's a computer programmer. He's very left brain. He's just unconvinced by anything, you know, because he can go eat a greasy burrito and stay alive. And he thinks that's fine. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I gave the guy a thousand milligrams of vitamin C the other day. Not very much. Um, yeah, Which is funny because to other people, you're like, whoa, that's so much. I've taken like 20, 20 grams in a day. So, oh, me is, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. High dose C is a whole nother topic, but <laughs> he had an immediate energy pickup from that. Yeah. Just the immediate. And, you know, I, I got him on some um, collagen protein. Again, he had immediate energy pickup. So it's like these people are so deficient. I know when I started, first started supplementing, and a lot of people think that you can get all the supplements you need from food. The truth is, a lot of people don't know this story, but during World War II, we had a boom in chemistry in the United States for the war effort. And after the war ended, they had all these chemists in a huge stockpile of chemicals. And they were trying to figure out what to do with them. And they figured out that they could apply it to agriculture. So they started with fertilizers and moved into pesticides and herbicides. But with the fertilizers in particular, they tend to bind to elements in the soil and strip them out. So sulfur is like one of those things that a nitrogen-based fertilizer binds to and pulls out of the soil. So the plants never get it. So it's estimated there's like a 70% decline in the micronutrient density of plants, which obviously transfers to the animals that eat them. And then when you eat the animal, you don't get as much yeah. um, since World War II. So yeah. at least to get started and get a base, you should definitely supplement because when I started with ADK, B vitamin C, magnesium, and iodine, it was this literally the simplest thing and super cheap. Mm -hmm. And it was a huge difference in the quality of my life. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, I'm a big, big fan of regenerative agriculture. That's yes. beyond just going grass fed. I have friends that are, yep. that, uh, you know, they're, 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 they have grass fed organic practices. And actually, I'm, I'm grateful to have these two guys in my life that um, that are working towards full regenerative. And they're, they're local guys. They're people I recommend to everybody mm -hmm. I know. Um, which makes it tough for me because it makes it harder yeah. for me to get my liver, my beef tongue, all these things I love. Yeah, um, it's like more and more, more and more expensive every time I go. <laughs> That's great that you eat those meats. Most people don't, and that that has all the elements we just talked about. Yeah, it. yeah. One of my favorites is actually kidneys, and uh, through some email, we found out that I like to drink a little, <laughs> and uh, I found that the kidneys have something that helps with. Um, it's kind of kind of a little bit of a histamine issue that that people yep. might get from drinking. Um, I, it's like DM DMAO or something like that. I can't remember what the uh, what the it's actual not DMSO is. It 
Probably, yeah. It's yeah. you can get it in a supplement form as well. But uh, okay. it sounds like kidney, GMS they're just, yeah. yeah, they're just terrific. And um, and I'm a big fan of like ver- uh, like treats like. And yep. let's be honest, when you're treating your body bad, you better give it the things it needs to to work to work hard and get back to shape. So, hundred uh, percent, man. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. And that that gets you the base, you know, um, with that stuff. So, yeah. So we did. So we talked a little bit about sunlight. I think we covered that one pretty good. Um, we should talk about grounding or earthing a little bit. Do you do any of that? I So I'm standing on a grounding mat right now. Nice. Um, yeah, my wife just bought, So uh, I, I have a couple affiliates. I never pushed my affiliates. I probably should because uh, yep. it'd be nice to make some money at this. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I have um, ground, let's see. It's uh, a ground therapy mat, Clint Ober, um, his yep. stuff. And, yeah, I have um, products. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if, if you know any other products because our whole thing with this is free, right? But let's here's here's how you do free grounding. And I'm sorry, sorry to take your spotlight here. No, no, do it. Go outside barefoot. Yeah. Period. Just go if you're not if you can't go barefoot because you have feet pain, which this happens a lot, which just blows me away. Um, that your feet hurt so bad walking that you have to have the support. But uh, but that's something for another podcast that we can talk about. But um Go outside and stand by a tree. You can touch it. You can stand within a yep. foot of it because it has that. What's that donut sphere shaped of energy? Double that, Taurus. Yeah, that actually, yeah. and that, I, that blows me away that a tree is built to ground you even when you're on in shoes. Yeah, it's an you antenna know? for the Schumann resonance. Yeah, it's crazy. So another biophysics. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, my my wife just picked up uh, on uh, on Earthing.com, which is like part of Clinover as well. Yep. They just came out with new blankets and she's, she missed out on the sale for the two comforters they had uh, a couple of months ago yeah. and they have new ones. So she bought two comforters. She's so stoked. She's like, we should probably buy more. <laughs> yeah. You know, let's talk about that for a little bit. So just to clarify for people, there's, there is a difference between earthing and grounding. So grounding is what Mike is doing right now. So you build up a static charge on your body, like a very positive charge using electronics especially in front of a computer screen. Uh, there's a lot of voltage potential there. And so when you ground, you discharge that static charge through the ground into the earth and bringing you back down to the same potential as, as the ground. Earthing is when you're outside standing on the bare earth and the earth itself is donating free electrons to you. Yeah. And they, they travel up through your cell membranes. It takes about 30 minutes to, to yeah. treat your whole body. And so that's, it's directly functions as an antioxidant to your body, which is, yeah. which is pretty wild if you think about it. Yep. Uh, Ayurvedic medicine still to this day, if you have something wrong with you, one of the first things they do are they bear you up to your knees. Yeah. They just let you hang out like that. Yeah. Um, the Indians, American Indians did that too. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if they had, if somebody got sick, they would bury him like chest deep and uh, build a fire next to him. Yeah. There's a reason we all feel amazing after coming home from uh, the beach and it's, yep. it's the earth and the sunlight, you know? Um, yeah. And, and the third we thing, a whole bunch that day, it's not that we, you know, exercise. Yeah. So well, and the beach does a third thing too. The, the ocean water itself um, has negative ions in the air. So when the waves crash, it aerosolizes the, the ocean water and there, it has a strong negative charge too. So you actually breathe it in through your lungs. Yeah. So you're, is that negative ions? Is that what that is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we have ion generators that people get for their houses. Yep. Uh, I mean, that's something you get in nature, waterfalls, beaches, yep. all these things cause this. So yep. um, now if I'm not mistaken, the earthing, the grounding mats, mm-hmm. um, they still they still let our bodies get that positive Schumann resonance or that the, you know, exchange the, um, the, the electron there, um, just not to the same extent. And we've seen that yep. in, in, with my wife, um, cause she's in an office all day. If yep. she is able to get her feet on the ground for 20 to 30 minutes before she goes to bed and we sleep on a grounding mat. Yep. If she has her feet on the ground, her sleep, her deep sleep is greater. And we track that through our aura rings. So her sleep, yep. deep sleep will be 20% higher than than just being on the grounding mat I, a patient at the office had uh night terrors every night for mm-hmm. like the last 20 years i had yep. her do that and on night two she didn't have a, uh, a night terror yep yeah it can be really good and it sounds like you're in an area that doesn't have a lot of dirty electricity 
Um, unfortunately, where I'm in in San Diego, I had to stop using grounding mats in my grounding sheet. Okay. Uh, yeah, for two reasons. One, even though I had dirty electricity filters in the um, in my house, which yeah. is something we can talk about, um, I put a stake in it outside in the ground. But because I live in a city, you know, American utility companies tend to use the earth itself as a return mm -hmm. uh, to the substation. So there was stray current going through the the dirt, and so the the sheet was picking that up and putting it into my body all night. And then on top of that. Um, because it's somewhat of a high EMF area, I basically had this big antenna on me that was yeah. picking up stray EMF and amplifying uh, it. Yeah. So, um, most likely our ground is okay here, but yeah. I do live within, uh, it's not within eyesight. I can see the, the stacks. Um, yeah. The very first ever nuclear power plant on this planet is right down the street from me. About no, I, would, I, would, I would live next to a nuclear power plant over... <laughs> over, over a lot of different yeah, things. Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a coal fire plant there too, and that's the unfortunate one. In in all honesty, so um, yeah. we want to move probably just because of those things. Um, but uh, not not too far from us, a few hours away in West Virginia. I just found this out last night. I think it's Green Bank, West Virginia. You mm -hmm. are not allowed to have even. You're not even allowed to have a, an antenna for a, a walkie-talkie yeah. in this one little area because it's a yeah, because the, it's the radio astronomy. Yeah, center. yeah. You know yeah. About that? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's been around since the '50s, um, but it's only recently that electrically sensitive people started moving there. Yeah, um, and it's it there is a, there is a difference there for sure. I can't wait to go visit. You have to you have to fly into Pittsburgh. We'll go take a. I would love to, I'd love to go there to yeah. to see if I could feel anything. I, I don't consider myself electrically sensitive, but. Um, just I've done a, a tremendous amount of research on it and it's it's not a tinfoil hat thing it's for real like yeah they, they it does affect you have you read a book called the invisible rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg I have not but man have I heard about that a lot in the last two weeks it's worth reading um it, the reason it's come up in the last two weeks is because he basically lays out what influenza actually is and what it's caused by and the startling thing is that it's not contagious which sounds crazy but when, when you read it um, you get it. But more important than that, he actually talks about what happened to people when they first started electrifying the earth. And yeah. it's a thing. Yeah. And that's that's uh, something. So I, I do work with a uh, an EMF specialist out of the other side of the state. And I really hope that um, through my own work and buying all the stupid meters that cost so much money, um, I really hope that I could start being kind of a uh, uh, satellite uh uh, person for her to test in Pittsburgh because there she yep. gets a lot of calls from our area. We spent five years fighting our smart meter. Um, we yep. still we finally had to get one, but it's out near the road now. Um, we have P PX and NDA uh, PX DNA filters in the basement on the mm -hmm. on the um, on our you know we, we just do it all on that because I am yep. slightly uh, affected by this. So, um, but yeah the. Uh, the meter that you that you would test for to see if your earth is is essentially putting stuff back into your uh, into your earth uh, grounding mat mm -hmm. is called a body voltage meter. And that's the last thing for me to buy right now. And I have not done that yet. So, yeah, yeah, I've got a couple meters, too. I don't get crazy with it, but, um, you know, I make sure I have the green wave dirty electricity filters. Um, yeah, always have that, you know, I've got my Wi-Fi and an outlet timer, you know, and get them on Amazon for like eight bucks and it yeah, just turns we, it off. I'm trying to think, we have an actual RF meter or RF switch. So oh, yeah, like RF's not great, but we hit it once a day if we need it turned on or off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, and we have a lot of things on that. We just don't even like to have electronics turned on. So yeah, yeah we have a lot of things on, on little switches and everything too. So yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure we have a lot of notes to share in this area. So. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you can get crazy with it. Like, you know, sometimes people just end up feeling overwhelmed and then you don't implement anything because it looks yeah. really expensive and difficult. But, yeah. you know, if you turn off your Wi-Fi at night, you know, turn off your cell phone, put it away from the bed, you're ahead of most people yep. just doing those two things. Yeah. You don't even need to get that crazy with it. Yeah. And, and we, the way we're talking, I mean, we have gone way overboard on the topics we wanted to. We wanted to talk about the freebies and, and, and why they're so important. And we still are, you know, like um, you get sunshine, period. Just get sunshine as much yep. every day as you can without burning. 
Um, get grounded. Well, what is it? 30 minutes you recommend? Because that's kind of the it takes 30. It takes if you have your bare feet on the ground. And this is one of the reasons that your feet have so many sweat glands is because they're designed to make a good electrical contact with the earth. Yeah. Um, it physically takes the electrons 30 minutes to travel from the soles of your feet to the top of your head. Okay. Okay. Um, hydration, get, yep. get spring water. Um, that might cost a little bit or, or um, I know Steve said he got a big Berkey. He was telling me that. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Those are good. Yeah. 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 So good filtration. Yeah. So, Structured water, if the low hanging fruit that anyone can do right now is get the brand, it's a brand, not a type of Celtic sea salt and take a little bit of pinch and at least put it in your morning glass of water yeah. or preferably two glasses, you're going to be ahead of 80% of the people. If you want to take it a little bit further, start looking at structured water devices. They have under sink ones, portable ones, all kinds of yeah. things like that, or get spring water, go to, go to findaspring.com. Um, or just go lay out in the sun. You'll structure the water in your own body. But you can take a glass bottle and put your water out in the sunlight as well, right? Yeah, yeah. There's actually you can do the clear glass bottle. There's two companies. There's one called Blue Bottle Love, which is a special type of cobalt blue that changes the water, the light into infrared. Oh wow! And it structures the water even quicker in sun. And then there's another company called Myron. M I R O N and they have a version of that as well. And it's, it's a little bit older and more established technology. Myron glass is pretty famous. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, you can literally stick your water bottle out there and I've tested it. It, it does actually structure it. It's just, it's kind of a pain just cause you always have to have your water yeah. out in the sun. You have Paul yeah. check. He, he'll build people the big old stone things with the, yeah, yeah, with the, the rock structuring stations. Yeah. Uh, yeah that that's, a method that I don't address often because it sounds crazy, but so crazy. Um, the, the crystals crystals do actually uh, structure water. Yeah, um, and it's it's through a radiant energy that they carry, and this isn't metaphysical. It's like it's literally the charge that they have, um, and this actually brings me into the next subject really seamlessly. So this is great. So you know, if you take a piece of quartz crystal and you squeeze it between a pair of pliers, it generates electricity. It's called piezoelectricity. Um, your fascia, which is a basically a system of tissue that penetrates throughout your entire body, works the same way. So wow. when you manipulate your fascia through movement, it generates uh, electrical charge, the same as what we've been talking about. So when you exercise, pretty much the primary benefit of it is that you're generating all this electrical charge in your body and that's donating electrons to everywhere else. That is, that's really neat. And th that's what's crazy. So that that's the movement, the movement based exercises are going to do that more up lifting weights, obviously great. It does that. But when you get into the really movement based stuff, like, you know, move Nat is, is one that I do yoga, um, you know, gymnastics, strength training, like that kind of stuff. Um, you manipulate the fascia and that is the primary benefit. That's awesome. So, um, man, that's cool. I didn't, I didn't realize that, uh, the movement stuff was better for that than, than lifting. Um, so lifting's great. You need to do that too. But, um, if you, if you're just want to generate a lot of charge, then you're going to be doing a lot of big full body yeah. movements. Yeah. I do come out at like when my wife and I, since she's working from home now, we'll do a five minute body weight exercises. And a lot yeah. of that's just, you know, it might just be pounding on the ground with the yep. heels, a little bit of jumping jacks, um, yeah. and other things. And you do just have more energy when you're done. Um, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. For people yeah. who don't know what fascia is, if you, if any of you hunt and you've had to butcher a deer or got a deer, you know, mm -hmm. if you Google fascia, you will know, you'll be like, Oh, I've seen that before. Um, but essentially if I had a full body suit on from head to toe, like green man group face, face covered and everything, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it would be like that bodysuit covers all over and there's a, I don't know if it was a Ted talk, but I, but I saw a, one doctor explaining, she had a guy walk out in a bodysuit and she grabbed, she like pinched right here and just grabbed really tight on the, on the suit. And she said, okay, now raise your hand. And he like instantly was like leaning like this and he couldn't raise his arm well enough. And then she goes, okay, lift your right leg up. He was able to do that. Lift your left. It didn't, the left leg didn't go up as high because it, yep. it's all tied together. So movement, chiropractic movement, actual 
uh, massages and, and specifically uh, with fascia practitioners, which I, I, I go to one who does really slow work. And I would love to have like a pressure, mm -hmm. a trigger point guy. Cause I would love that pain. He's my guy's just like, he's got his hand on you for five minutes, just pushing in one direction. And yeah, but I like that. I like that dig in. So yeah, the raw, like raw thing. Yeah. Yeah. I would like more of that. I want to be in pain. Yeah. With <laughs> yeah. I did a, I did a 10 series of raw thing with a pretty well-known guy and man, it's, it's intense. It's worth it. It's intense. I got a buddy out in Vegas named Glenn Hall who has kind of a combination, almost like the, um, is it the body garage out in LA or, or oh, the human garage? Yeah. Human garage. It, he does similar work to them where he's kind yeah. of find a few different protocols over 20, 30 years. And he works with, uh, with Tony Robbins and, and stuff. And, um, and a lot of the big name bodybuilders and, and athletes. And it's just really cool to talk with him about it. And, you know, he's just, he's a really interesting guy too. So, um, I'll have to get you in contact if you're ever in Vegas for anything. So, yeah, I would love that. I, I do think it's really important to focus on the body. So your brain's supported and that's, that's a big part of it. Like most of us in the West we're we live in the mind all the time and we're disconnected from our bodies, which your body was designed to move itself through three dimensional space. And that's why I really like body weight style workouts because they're organic to our human systems mm -hmm. and lifting weights is great too, but we weren't designed to move a bar up and down. We were designed yeah. to move our body through space. And have you, have you checked out move Nat at all? A little bit. I, I, um, as a primal coach, um, uh, what's his name? Daryl. Oh no, no. Daryl Edwards, Edwards isn't move net. He's, um, primal play. Yeah. Move nets. Uh, Erwan LaCour is the guy that, that, that started that, but there, there's a lot of different systems like that. Move is just one of them. <laughs> um, but it's and Ir Irwan was a parkour guy like back in the eighties and nineties. And so it does have some parkour elements in it. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you what you do, you do some of the, the movements in there and you just feel good or like, like, a GMB, um, dot IO. That's another, I mean, they have tremendous free content. Um, uh, it's their YouTube videos are so good, but it's similar to move Nat, maybe a little bit more involved, but to even just their floor work, you end up feeling really good afterwards. And if you guys already do stuff like that and you're looking to really, really up level your game in that scenario, look at um, Ido Portal on yep. or on uh, in Instagram. He probably has YouTube stuff too, but he's the guy that a couple MMA fighters go to and they get like all of 15 minutes of a week with him because, you know, all their other coaches are taking up too much time. But they feel it's so important that that 15 minutes, he's there to tell them th uh, a few things. I mean, they fly him in and everything. So he, I mean, you can't not look at him when, when it's just amazing the way he moves, the way he uses his body. Yeah. So, there's quite a few, uh, Ido Portel followers here in San Diego. Yeah. Um, and he's got some really good stuff. Like his floor work is taken from Sistema, which is a, which is a Russian martial art. So it's, it's exactly the same, um, where he's doing the kind of crawling along the floor and kicking up the back leg. Um, and you do feel really good after doing that. And like some of the proprioceptive stuff he's doing where he's punching the tennis ball against the wall. Um, that's also really good. And if you want to one up that everyone should learn how to juggle. Like I taught myself a couple months ago because cross any movement that crosses this center line in your body, um, makes both hemispheres of your brain work together. And it's clinically proven to increase your cognition, your memory, your ability to learn. Um, and it kind of has a calming effect too. So any complex movement, so climbing, yoga, but if you just want to amplify that, just yeah. juggle because you're crossing the, the center line the whole time and your both hemispheres are working overdrive. And the, um, so I actually learned how to juggle when I was a kid, which is probably one of the coolest things I ever learned growing up. I just wanted to be the guy who could juggle. And um, yeah, a guy come into our elementary school and teach us all. He started with scarfs, little like tissue, not tissue paper, but essentially yeah. you could use tissue paper. But they were like um, magician scarfs, essentially not tied together, pulling yep. out, the top, you know. And um, you would you would practice with just two and toss them back and forth and catch them, and then you would do three. And then he did it same thing with like tennis balls. You start with two, 
and just do a circle throw and catch it. Circle throw, throw across, circle throw, throw across. And then you move up to three and he kind of taught you that route. So um, it was a really, a really fun thing. So um, did I lose, are you still there? Yeah, those are the progressions. They're, they're, yep, yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you fine. Your your uh, video got a little sketchy. That's all. So, okay, yeah, I think we're back now. Yep. You know, yeah, those are the progressions. There's an excellent YouTube video. I think the guy's Belgian or something, but he has a free tutorial on how to juggle. It's like it's amazing. Anyone can learn it. Um, but you know, to tie it all four of these things together, so sunshine, grounding, hydration, and um, uh, exercise. So what I've been doing because right we're losing you a little bit Theo. here although you kind of you get have, um is tying all four of these things together are you there yeah i'm here now yeah yeah hello yep okay got it. gotcha um but you can do all four of these at once so i've been going to a park and working out barefoot or there is a company called earth runners and they make conductive barefoot sandals yeah which are awesome if yeah you, if they're, they're pretty you, you got to be bold to wear them in public but i i never took mine off no. this year um let me see i got i got these uh right here i'll show everybody um, I get harassed because all year round I wear earth runners, but that's the wrong one. Oh, you wear them too. Yeah. yeah. So I actually, I eat dinner like this. I, this just cracks me up. I just kind of eat that way all the time. But yeah, I, um, yeah. I went somewhere to a farm market, uh, like Sor Sorgo's Orchard, which is local. And I had um, a mask yeah. on and I was talking to one of the girls and I go, how the heck did you recognize me? And she goes, oh, your, your shoes. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, dude, I, wear I, I wear mine all the time. Yeah, and they are awesome because a lot of the public parks they use glyphosate uh, Roundup you know, on the grass, yeah. and so I, I don't want to have my feet on there the whole time. Yeah. And so something something funny about this is where you are, it's warm, man. I get I was down. I was wearing these in zero degree weather. <laughs> Did you wear the, the socks? No, no, I make. In those socks. Oh, you're going barefoot. Yeah, that's <laughs> impressive, man. The UPS yeah. guy that comes to our office always wears shorts. And one day I didn't wear them. And he just, he's like, I'm so disappointed in you, man. <laughs> so, he's, wore, he's one of those guys that just wears shorts all winter. It's just fun for him to, to it's always yeah. to talk about, I guess. So, yeah, that's funny. But yeah, get yourself outside and then do body weight style movements like so gmb.io great resource great youtube videos um gymnastics body is another one uh move nat i mean youtube is just full of these things um fitness faqs if you want to do a little bit more strength training stuff like daniel vadden all he's got some amazing youtube content but work out barefoot in the sun you know just a pair of shorts or whatever you can manage and um you know make sure your water's structured but if you're in the sun it's going to be getting structured anyway otherwise mm -hmm. you know throw a pinch of celtic salt or um any of those other methods we talked about like a natural act technology is portable or something and yeah. you know you're going to be hit, hitting all your bases right there so yeah. i'm just as we talk i'm throwing up some banners so people can see what we have going on what we're talking oh, yeah. about like yeah. the celtic gray salt um the uh the G gm I had I did have it up now. I already forget what I typed. Um, yeah. yeah, and and like guys, if you don't want to, if you have trouble figuring out movement, take five minutes. Put a five minute timer on your phone. Go in your backyard. Go in the go in the hallway if you have to. Do bear crawls up and down the hallway, and then try to see yeah. how low to the ground you can do bear crawls, and then do crawls. yeah. Those, um, yeah, those are good for your brain too because you do alternating. So it's it's a it's a diagonal, so it crosses your body's center line. Um, there's actually a whole form of therapy used for kids that involves crawling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's super neat stuff, and it doesn't take us like we talked. We went way too in depth, right? But that's just what we do. That's like the kind of guys we are on this. But it doesn't take the in depth. It takes the free, and that's what we love to talk about. So um, I will uh, because I do have affiliate links. Um, so I will, I'm happy to put some of the affiliate links I have up for Earth Runners. Um, it gets you 10% off. And then also for earthing.com, they just have some sales. I don't have any any percentage off for those, but I'll I'll make sure I throw those in the comments for uh, 
for Steve, I know he goes, man, I got to get one of those. So, um, yeah, the sandals a hundred percent are worth it. And the stuff on earthing.com is awesome. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and I, I definitely use it when, when appropriate. Yeah. Um, Do you know, um, cause I know there's, um, you know, in all these, in all these health companies, if one person gets upset about something, they'll move on and start another health company. Same, same exact right. thing. But do you know of other earthing or grounding companies that might be better or is, cause I know I've seen some that have organic materials versus yep. the synthetic thing that, that I'm standing on. You, you know, I've come across a few, um, but they're, they're not as well ironed of an operation as, as earthing.com. Okay. Um, a lot of the really good stuff comes from Austria. And so, and I, the name escapes me, but like they have some super high end um, earthing and grounding stuff. Um, as far as the shoes go, there is a company from Australia. It's called Earth, E-A-R-T-H-E. And they make a little kit that was well, just, it's literally just this little strip where you can retrofit a pair of shoes to be grounded. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is- so um, it's a strap, right? Yeah. So I literally have, I bought a pair of those and I never put them in my shoes yet because uh, I, I do have to wear, one of my jobs, I have to wear shoes. And... Um, Depending on the weather, because I'm outside, I never know which pair I'm going to wear. And I didn't want to have to spend like $50 on two pairs. Right. So dummy me, I just never put them on, you know? Yeah. Um, so now I'm, I'm probably, since it's summertime, I'm just going to put them on the ones I know I wear all the time. And, yeah. Earth uh, Earth Runners makes a pair where you can retrofit a, a Vivo Barefoot shoes. Yeah. That's um, they have like... The, the punch. What's that? The, the yeah. Net. I didn't want to, I never got one because I didn't want to go through the sole. But yeah. if you're hardcore about it... Yeah. Yeah, I got people. My uh, my vivos and my lems. I just like them too much to punch a hole in. Punch a hole in them. Awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, those are called earthies, right? The strap. E r t h y or e a r t h y. It's e a r t h e. I think they're Australian, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And there used to be a sandal company called Plugs, but they they weren't very high quality. Uh, and it, it was like Plugs, but with a Z. Yeah, those were painful. Yeah, my feet. I had a pair of those too. And the plugs. You had a pair. Yeah. Yeah, they come off. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that I go barefoot when I can, but you know, out here with the, you have to be careful because they use Roundup in the city parks. Yeah. Um, so you don't want want that soaking in through your feet. Yeah, that's man. We could uh, we could talk a long, long time. Um, uh, I'm trying to find these earthy straps before we run the show, everybody. Uh, nope. Yeah, I mean, hopefully straps, people so. got some. Yeah, hopefully people got some some takeaway stuff because I'm big on that, giving people things they can take and use. So for movement resources, I mean, YouTube's your friend. Some some of them sell courses, some of them don't. But like, just to get an idea of movement-based workouts to manipulate your fascia and generate electricity in your body, which is the whole point. That's why you feel better afterwards. You can't beat, you know, just type in gymnastics, strength training, or animal movements or animal flow. Yep. That's that's a kind of a popular thing. And it looks weird. I get it. But I'll tell you what, you feel so good afterwards. Yeah, you sure do. You definitely do. So, um, and another, another thing that you're doing for everybody is you are going to give us a place where we can just sign in with an email. And uh, because what you specialized in, what you what got you started here was because you got burnt out and uh, you yeah. put your yeah. burnout summit. And so you've entered for yes. the whole summit. I know what you're giving is like three or five uh, free videos, but the whole summit, you had some big name people in this summit, man. Um, uh, yeah, it was it was a popular one. Um, it was really fun to interview experts on it, um, and I put I took what I thought were the the three best videos, and just made them free. So you can go there, you can opt in and just watch the videos for free. But um, yeah, there was some there were some great people on there. Doctor Platt's interview in particular, I think, is if someone is dealing with chronic stress or burnout, that can his information can literally change things for you in hours that's awesome um it's 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 that fast and then um roy krebs yeah roy was was his was really good so that's natural stack so 
yeah. he talks about how people chronic stress and burnout, you can be very low on, you know, neurotransmitters and how to fix that. Yeah. And then, I, I, um, the neurotransmitter thing is such a cool thing. I've not dove into it as much as I want, but um, I did use some of his products before we got going here just so I'd be on point. And I don't use a lot of yeah. neurotransmitter or neuro, uh, I don't use a lot of nootropics. Um, for me, the only nootropic that I really see every time as a positive um, is honestly uh, some exogenous ketones is kind of the thing that works the yeah. best for me. So, yep. Yeah, that's a good, that's a great natural option too. And, you know, that's, that's that MCT oil it converts into ketones almost immediately when you, when you have it, or you can take the exogenous ketones directly. I used to be really, really heavily into nootropics before I knew how to give my body the right conditions to heal itself and have energy naturally. Um, so I've been through the full gamut of nootropics and a lot of people that are stressed or burnt out. They tend to start there because it's an effect they can feel mm -hmm. and it acts quickly. But one of the challenges of nootropics is some of them take and some give. So the type of nootropic that would take a good example would be, um, you know, if you microdose LSD that uses your serotonin very quickly, it's hard on your serotonin network. So you have to like replenish it. Um, whereas an example of a nootropic that gives would be like acetylcholine from natural stacks that gives your brain the raw building blocks it needs to take yeah. and make the acetylcholine neurotransmitter. So you have to be careful which ones you're taking because when I was burnt out, <laughs> I was stacking nootropics left and right. I was taking like alpha brain multiple times a day, you know, from <laughs> on it. And that's a blend and the alpha brain works it's super strong and yeah. it has a lot of stuff in it. And that's a example of one that causes a neurotransmitter dump and then you're really wired, but then your brain's depleted and it takes a long time to, to recover. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I've used Siltep from natural stacks. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I have that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I just don't feel, I don't ever feel anything from it. Um, uh, for, for, for I, I've not taken Siltep, um, enough times I've not tested like before and after days. I didn't take it days. I did with any kind of yep. test to see, um, like end back testing or anything, anything, but, um, but yeah, I, I don't generally get the effects that I would like, but, uh, when I take ketones or MCT oil for an interview, which I like to do that for an interview, um, my words are just there. They just come yep. to me. And oftentimes yep. the words that I didn't know, I quite knew how to use. They come out and I'm like, I, I rewatch and I'm like, did I use that right? And and yeah, it's like yeah. you have bigger vocabulary, uh, better yeah. better knowledge on things. You recall faster, and uh, it's just a terrific thing. And um, uh, out like for a for an in the moment supplement, that's my that's my go to now. Um, but uh, aside from that, the only supplement I feel like I can't really live without is a hydrogen water tablet uh, because it, yep. it just some of the stomach problems I've had over the last year that uh, have really come, uh, a lot of a lot of work has done, been done on my body with carnivore. A lot of healing has yeah. happened with that, but the hydrogen water um, allows me to still have drinks on the weekends without needing to fast for a day to recoup my stomach. Um, yep. Could I just stop drinking? Do you, do you take it before, after, or during? For drinking? I. I don't yeah. actually take it when I'm drinking or anything. I, I take it. I generally take it first thing in the morning. Sometimes yep. I will take it uh, in the evening as well. Um, again, I muscle test yep. to see if I need it. So, yep, yeah, I use those tablets every day. Yep. And when they were one, instrumental when I started recovering from burnout because I had a, a lot of brain inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of mitochondrial dysfunction in my brain. That's where most of your mitochondria are. And the hydrogen brought down the inflammation in my brain super quick because it's one of the only antioxidants that crosses a blood brain barrier. Like vitamin C can't get through. Uh, all these antioxidants you heard of, turmeric, none of that stuff crosses a blood brain barrier, but hydrogen does and does it within minutes. And I remember when I first took it, it like I immediately felt a sense of calm focus. Oh, and wow. it, 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 yeah, because my brain inflammation was so high, and that's that's why a lot of people can deal with procrastination or um, just uh, ADD. You know, they're just jumping around. It's because they can't focus because their brain's so inflamed. That's uh, yeah. The hydrogen tablets for me are you know a plus. Yeah, and for me, I don't feel it right away. What I feel is when I stop taking them, 
Um, I stopped taking them for like three or four days because I thought I ran out because yeah. there was some whole deal with Trucy going on that just stinks. That was like the first guys yeah. to come up with hydrogen. Yeah, um, I'm, I, yeah. I, so I my I got into the the business side of health through hydrogen and Trucy did some real damage um, to the industry yeah. with That's with all that. The, yeah, but the their tablets are made by a guy named Alex up in Canada. And it's a great product. So I, if I'm not mistaken, the guy that makes Mercola's product, because that's who I'm taking, that's what I'm using now. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Mercola had a nice sale on his and uh, it's like eight to 10 um, parts per million um, in a 16 ounce glass with one tablet, which is pretty darn nice. Yep. And, uh, there's, and there, yeah, there's a lot of debate. To, yeah, I have, I originally use and I still sell the pressurized technology. Um, but I may switch to the um, open container. Um, the, there's a huge debate in the industry about this, though, because hydrogen is the smallest and lightest element on Earth. It goes through steel. Mm -hmm. um, it goes through glass. You know, if you keep it in a glass bottle, it's, it escapes very quickly. So the open cup technology, there is some criticism that, you know, you let it fizz in an open cup and it just goes right into the atmosphere. Whereas the pressurized one, you put it in a bottle, you screw the cap on real tight, and then it infuses the water with the hydrogen. I've tested both, and I think both work. Um, mm -hmm. The open cup technology, they talk about micro bubbles and how it kind of gets trapped in the water for at least five minutes. Yeah. And the pressurized one says, well, it doesn't have anywhere to go for a while. So, yeah, it gets so, infused into the water. With, with my body, I stopped needing as many since I moved on to the Mercola open open tabs ones. I had I had another brand yeah. that I used for open tab um, that I was just trying out and I needed more yeah. of them. Um, and they claimed Interesting, because th those are, yeah, those are all made by the same manufacturer. There's only two manufacturers in North America. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really hard to make um, and it's dangerous to make. It uses elemental magnesium. You have to, it's specially milled. You have to ship it from Europe and it's like, it has like an eight week lead time. So hardly anybody makes it, but I prefer the tablets over the machines for sure. Yeah. Um, so we, I want to just keep talking, man. We need to wrap this up though, for your sake. Yeah. Um, and, and if anybody else is ever going to watch this thing, they're going to say an hour. Holy crap. This is uh, my longest one yet. And I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to have it this long. I really am. This is uh, a lot of fun for me. And um, uh, you, you got anything you want to leave us with? Um, aside from everybody can find you at uh, at the we had that page up and it's in the notes uh, in the in the description. But it's the um, burnoutsummit.com uh, beat your burnout. So you can sign up for uh, for Theo's email and. Uh, and he just he puts out great content every day from the type of plants you need in your house um, to help clean out the air for, you know, people love plants. Why not get ones that help clean stuff out? Yep. So, yeah. uh, stuff like that to hydrogen water. And it's just really great. So anything you can leave us with? Um, no, that covers it, man. I, I think people get a lot of value just from those uh, three free videos on, on the Burnout Summit because it's it's all about just having more energy and the more energy you have, the more willpower you have, the more willpower you have, the more things you get done. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just want to make sure people get out there and, and um, have some takeaways from this. So make sure you really focus on your water, find a spring.com or buy spring water or throw in some Celtic salt or get a structured water device um, either through you, with, uh, you know, one of Gary's devices yeah. or the wellness enterprise movement based exercise. Check it out. There's a lot of different directions going. You could do MoveNat, fitness FAQs, um, GMB.io, gold medal bodies, um, gymnastics bodies. Like, mm -hmm. just go on YouTube, check it out. They're organic to the body. You'll generate a lot of electricity, um, and you reduce inflammation. You'll feel better. You'll sleep better. Make sure you get as much sun as you can when you can. And then, if you're working around electronics. You know, either jump on earthing.com and, and get a grounding pad so you can discharge the, the the high positive static charge that you build up on your body all day, and then try to get outside and you know get yeah. barefoot as much as you can. Yeah, because the two the two main things that all of these are doing for us is one, it's reducing our inflammation through multiple different uh, levels, yep. and two, 
it's turning on our mitochondria, which are the batteries yes. of every, you nailed it. That's every it. Cell. So that's, that's it. All it's, it's, is yep. trying to reduce inflammation and increase our battery strength. You nailed it. Yeah, that's exactly. So all four of these things, that's exactly what they do. Yep. We should have started with that. <laughs> I know, I know, we should have. But you know what? We ended there, and you can use this as a tagline, but that's exactly it. Reduce inflammation, increase your cellular batteries. That's yep. it. Terrific, man. Yep. Hey, cool. hang on for a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end yep. the broadcast here. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Steve, Noah, you guys are cool. I appreciate you guys tuning in here. And um, and uh, just thank you. And uh, if you want to find another place you can find Theo is uh, he's been on the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast, which is a business podcast for really uh, not just type A people, but just business ambitious people. So um, he has multiple podcasts on there. He's in, he's done with those guys in there. I, I've only listened to the one podcast now with them. I like them a lot. They are cool guys. They're so. good dudes. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll end it at that, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And cool. uh, and any questions for us, Theo is is a guy that you can reach out to. His information's in the notes below. So thanks, guys. Thank you.